morning guys, James here from Sunseeker Southampton. A uh, very windswept day over in Carroll's as we're just departing Shepherd's Marina which is one of the usually lovely tranquil sites here on the Medina River. Uh, looking out so we've got Carroll's Yacht Haven here and then we're out to, to open sea. Uh, so today we're going to do a little bit about solo boating and how, uh, how this actually works if you're out on the water on your own. Um, so I've run over with a friend today on the sports fisher just in front of us here as our taxi if you like uh, to pick up a ribeye 785 which is just coming onto the market as a, a new brokerage listing so this is uh, a couple of years old and i'll do a full walk around video another day when the weather is much better explaining all about her in a little more detail but basically just under eight meters length overall and uh, she lives on a trailer typically over here on the isle of wight uh, put in the water for us this morning. She is anti fouled so can stay in and will now stay in with me in Swanwick for a few weeks before we get her back out when the trailer comes over. Uh, she's powered by a single 300 horsepower Yamaha outboard motor there, four stroke, very modern technology, fuel efficient and what have you. Uh, you have to excuse if the wind noise is quite uh, strong today, doing my best with the microphone, but uh, I say it's pretty foul conditions. We're sort of about 20 to 35 knot gusts and a good sort of one and a half metre swell out there today. So just really to explain a bit about how you might want to go out on a boat on your own. So obviously we, we're picking this up today. Um, I want to get the boat set up so that when I arrive at the other end, it's easy for me to, to get my lines and my fenders sorted out without having to, to stow everything in lockers and get it back out again. So you'll see here what I do in my bow line is I, I bring her up around the, uh, the cleat at the front there and then I tie it off back here on a on a handrail so it's easy to get to uh, a lot of smaller boats like this rib you would keep that bow line generally attached to the to the bow eye which is tucked underneath the front on the tube there so not easy access to it always important to tie it off and in theory should be no longer than the length of the boat so that in the event it did go over the side it doesn't get as far as the engine itself so that's all set up forward uh, here at the helm i've got fenders say lying on the floor so i can literally stick that straight over the side when we get back to the mooring the other end and then my stern lines, see the boat's actually got two on it here, but they normally live hooked on a cleat on the back there. Obviously they could fall off the back and cause problems with, uh, with getting right around the prop again. So say I just tie them off in a nice coil there and they're just a couple of uh, very quick hitches on there to release and the, the rope's ready to go. Um, kit that I'm carrying with me today. So I've got my safety grab bag down here which has got things like flares, uh, emergency charts, basic toolkit, first aid kit and what have you. Take that with me on all boat deliveries. Uh, we're not carrying a life raft today purely as we're only going a very short run and we've got another boat with us in convoy. Uh, rocks out with just with a few bits and pieces, you know, sustenance stuff. We're not at sea for very long today, but you know, bits of paper towel stuff handy for drying camera lenses and what have you. And then uh, on myself, I wear a, um, there's lots of different life jackets in the, in the market, but I wear a Spinlock Deck Vest Pro, which is, um, it's at the expensive end of the market, but it's more of a horseshoe shape here around me. Try and stand the camera back enough that you can get a, a sort of profile shot of how it works. But it's very comfortable around the neck, whether you're wearing it with heavy duty wet weather gear like I'm wearing today, or whether it's, um, it's on just, you know, with a shorts and t-shirt if you like. But it has uh, a one strap in the middle here very easy to attach and adjust and then i have these pockets which you'll see around on the sides of my life jacket here and in those pockets i carry um, an emergency locator beacon which is called an epurb or plb uh, there's a safety knife for cutting ropes a handheld vhf which is very handy for talking to marinas and communicating with other boats uh, and then a, a leatherman multi-tool as well which is always handy for tightening uh, the odd screw that comes loose or what have you so it's just a basic kit uh, but in the event that i ended up in the water on my own um, i've got the gear with me i also have a waterproof torch in there uh, as i do quite a bit of passage making at night um, so say it's a, it's a very compact uh, it just saves me carrying a sort of bum bags worth of um, extra equipment with me and gives me confidence then if i'm walking around a boat and i lose my footing slip over the side that i've got a little bit more time to sort myself out and hope of getting found before i get too cold uh, so just scanning around how the boat itself works. Uh, so we've got ahead of us here, obviously a hydraulic steering system. This is uh, called a kill cord. So this basically in the event that I pull this out, it will stop the engine immediately. Uh, and that's clipped onto the life jacket here. So always critical to wear one of those at sea. Um, 
in the event, say you lose your footing, come off a wave awkwardly or what have you, it always means that you're going to get that instant kill the engine. You've got a bit of time to sort yourself out and none of those horror stories that you see out there occasionally from time to time where somebody goes over the side and a boat's going round and round out of control. So important to wear that. This is um, like the, the larger engines that we, we sell in the new boats today. Uh, it's a fly-by-wire throttle system, so very easy to increase the revs here, just literally touching the throttle. No stiff gear cables to worry about. Uh, we're on a six knot limit just coming out of the harbour here until we get to these marker boys and then we can get going properly. So we've got a nice big readout digital gauge here giving things like RPM, fuel, fuel consumption and what have you. So you can see it's doing 1.1 nautical mile uh, liters per nautical mile at the moment which is very very low the engine's literally in tick over at the moment uh, we've got a nice bluetooth fusion stereo system here the all important coffee to keep us warm whilst we're running uh, vhf so i'm currently on channel 80 which is just coming out of the marina and i'm going to switch that back down to channel 12 now which is um, southampton vts vessel traffic uh, which we mean we can communicate if we need to with the ships around us but more than anything on a, on a boat this size, it's just about staying out of everybody else's way. So it's useful to understand where the big commercial ferries are, pilot boats picking up their uh, staff as the big ships to port the port here. Uh, we've got a, a little chart plotter here, which is nice. Uh, it seems to work with the gloves on, which is a nice feature. Often touchscreen electronics don't like the rain and don't like wearing, uh, wearing gloves. So it's nice to be able to stay dressed up for the conditions and you'll see I say we're in the woolly hat, we've got some nice waterproof gloves on and a full wet weather gear, including the wellies down there, just to keep us warm. So if you want to go out on boats like this, this is really 365 day usage. You've got to, um, you've got to get dressed up for the conditions. So what we're going to do now is just get the boat up and going. Just have a quick look around us to check nobody's out here. Uh, you can see our speed on here on the GPS, so we're doing 16 knots at the moment. And so here's our little convoy boat, 22 foot sports fisher alongside us. And you can see how these get up and go very quickly. So I've got my engine trim right in at the moment. Uh, and all we can do now is say if we start to increase the revs here, you'll see the speed coming up. It's a very comfortable boat. If we just spin the camera around, you can see these uh, helm seats have got the wing backs on which make it very secure. You really sort of sit sit down into the seat here. So it's a very um, very sturdy feel when you're underway. Uh, camera might be wobbling around a bit, so it's difficult to do this driving and, and also filming, but it's a very secure ride. Uh, Ribeye boat, so the, the tubes sit out of the water when you're underway and you're relying on the, the hull to do all the hard work of, of beating through the, um, through the seas. And the tubes are there as much as anything for for security and, and safety in the event that you had a, a problem, the boat would still float. Uh, obviously used by people like the RNLI, rescue services and what have you. And um, they also soften the ride. So if you come off a big wave, um, you, you take some of that impact absorbed into the tubes and just makes it a very soft boat. So we're cruising here at the moment, just over 21 knots. We're doing 2,800 RPM. And it looks like we're getting 0.9 miles to the litre. So if I just spin the, uh, the speed up a bit more, you start to see fix up now. We're doing 28 knots. Still very comfortable. Say so we can have this conversation here without feeling like we're getting bumped around. And we just do a couple of turns so you can get a feel for what the boat's like in a, in a turn here. So responds very well. Losing very little speed in the turns. So if we take it round so that we're straight into the head sea here. Still a very soft ride here. I say weather not really conducive to most people coming out on the water, although you will find rib owners tend to be uh, quite adventurous types. So we have a rib in the family, so love this sort of boating 365 days a year. Does mean you've got to get dressed up with the appropriate kit on. Um, and that sometimes even means in the summer months where it's a, you're torn between getting dressed up to stay warm 
but equally wanting to stay dry. Uh, so we're now in what's called a following sea. So the engine obviously behind with the sea behind that. So what happens now is as I bring the, uh, the speed up, you'll start to see the boat surfing the waves here. And we just need to try and balance the speed so that she doesn't fall into all the troughs as we're going along. So you see we've got a bit of wash from the boat here in front. So it's very flat. I've got the engine trimmed in. And we're doing 33 knots now. Boat's still very comfortable. Um, these are suspension seats, but I haven't got them set up to need much uh, suspension travel at the moment. So things to be aware of when you're out, obviously on your own, uh, in the event that you have a problem, you've got nobody to help you out. So it's important things like checking your, you know, you've got your sufficient fuel, uh, keeping a good visible watch all around you all the time. So this time of year, we get a lot of weed in the water. So just making sure there aren't um, obstructions, you no know, lumps of driftwood, that kind of thing that might suddenly hit our propeller and cause us to lose drive. Um, and also just trying to put you in situations where in the event that you had a problem, you lost your propulsion or something goes wrong with the boat for whatever reason have you put yourself in immediate danger so that means things like uh, if we've got a if we've got the wind direction blowing us onto a lee shore uh, we try and stay away from that so that in the event that suddenly the drive is lost we've got time to plan our our maneuvers so we don't suddenly find ourselves into the shallow water and up on the rocks uh, and also things like the channel here so this is the main it's a bit hard to show without showing on a chart, but this is the main shipping channel through here, which curves around hard left and up into Southampton water. And what we tend to do in smaller boats like this is we'll run just outside the channel. The idea with that being that in the event we have a problem again, we don't become a shipping hazard for the large yachts that need the, um, they need the water depth that's always maintained in those big channels. Say like Southampton's a commercial port. Uh, one of the busiest ports in the world, in fact. So lots of comings and goings every day. Um, so outside the channel, you know, I could drop my anchor now and, um, and I'm not an immediate risk to anybody whilst I get myself sorted out or request somebody to come out and give us some assistance. So it's little things like that always taking into consideration how you would deal with yourself in an emergency. Um, obviously, we're buddied up with another boat today. So we're just allowing enough space when we get to things like navigation turn markers. You know, if I'm on the outside, so about to make a turn over to my port side just going to allow enough room for the the boat up alongside us here suddenly don't cut him up just like on the road uh, generally on a day like today cruising speed would be 25 30 knots I and mean, i'm sitting here at 20 knots at the moment as it's easier to talk to you with the uh, with one hand on the wheel and, and one hand holding the camera but if i had a little bit more concentration today we could probably wind the boat up pretty much to wide open throttle um, with a 300 on the back, I suspect this boat's getting on for 45 knots plus. Um, we'll just give it a go now and see what we can achieve in the, uh, in the conditions. As I say it's quite bumpy, um, but let's see how we get on. So we're doing 43 knots. So we're now doing 48 knots. See the boat's still running very level. I can still have a conversation with you here, even running at this speed. Say 46 knots. I'm just gonna slow that back down. So always important to trim the engine in before you put it into a turn. So we just brought the engine back in. We're down to 32 knots. And you can see how quickly the difference in speed from the guy sitting there at 20 knots, you know, how, the, how quickly you cover the ground. So I say it's a very impressive hull, very dry ride. You can see I haven't taken any spray over the top. I'm still totally dry. And now coming back against the rough weather, this is normally where a boat would really be getting beaten up and we can still have a pretty sensible conversation here say boat's running nice and level
So we'll check back in once we're back into uh, the Hamble River and we'll have a little bit of a better look around the boat. So we're now back in the Hamble River, just heading up to Swanwick. It's about a 25 minute run at six knot speed limit. A bit of tide with us today. It's just making life a little bit easier. So I'm just getting set up ready for arriving solo into the berth when we get back to our sales pool. And um, so you see I've taken my bow line off the, the cleat up forward where I had it tied down earlier and it's now ready to go. I have it looped back round just lying on the floor here so that I can step off with that when I take my stern line as well. I've got a fender set up here. Generally boats this sort of size you might run two possibly three fenders and then on the aft quarter I've got another fender and my stern line is coming down on the deck here with the loose end just up on the tube there. I tend to like to loop it inside like this so in the event that this ever falls one way or the other it's going to fall into the boat and all, all I should do is, is take the boat in alongside on the pontoon and I should literally stand off with my bow line and my stern line and um, and get it made fast on the pontoon and then we'll sort out turning off the engine and, and getting the boat put back to bed till the weather improves and we can get it properly cleaned and prepped for, for some mo marketing photos and what have you. Um, so I'll check back in a sec and we'll uh, we'll see how we get on with docking. So here we are, we've just turned into the the fairway uh, between the pontoons here which run down so we've got tide currently on the way in which is uh, which is coming this way underneath the boat and then we've got the wind straight behind us it's back onto southwesterly direction so that's actually going to push us off our berth as we come alongside um, although we will be in the lee of another boat once we get about 80 percent of our way into the mooring so we have to do this with a bit of conviction to begin with uh, so obviously I have to remove the kill coil at this stage because I'm going to have to step off the boat and, um, and take the lines with me obviously to tie up so uh, basically we're going to come round into an arc over onto the, the starboard side here which is going to put us broadside into the into the wind and then we're going to reverse into this mooring. Uh, with smaller boats like this sometimes they tend to find they go as much sideways as they do backwards so sometimes you need to use a little bit of throttle just to get them to, to do what you want them to do. Uh, but again everything's back to neutral nice slow speed allow the boat to settle before we start that maneuver There you have it, everything nice and slow. If you step off my lines here. Just let the boat come back. We've got our bow line nice and secure. Just have to be conscious. The boat doesn't drift back with the engine, so what we're going to do is put a spring line on. With uh, smaller boats like this, obviously you've got a little bit of ability to manipulate them by hand. And there we have it. So tied up safely, now we can tidy our lines up. Tend to double these up back onto the cleat, just in the event that one breaks. Potentially it doesn't drift straight off the dock. Now we can turn the engine off and shut the boat down. Hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for further 
video is just like this.